Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Lee. You will not find any videos of myself during these lectures. Why? Because it is not about me. But the focus should be on the gospel. We hope that you had a good week, and I hope you are wearing your mask and social distancing during this crisis. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We are bringing you messages using the manuscripts, which were the original writings and interpretation into the King James Bible. This will give each and every one of us a clear view and understanding of the Bible, which was created with the wisdom of God to teach with clarity and understanding, not to confuse. As we look at the book of James chapter one, verse five through six, it teaches us if any lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who giveth to all men and women freely. So go with us now into another lecture where some are recorded live and some come directly from the desk of the pastor. Come follow us with your Bibles as we follow Christ. I want to talk to you today about how easy it is to stand next to a blessing and miss it. So many of us do that on a daily basis. And God, it is him only that chooses who and how he wants to bless to us. The theme of this message is, are you retaining your knowledge or not? And the knowledge that we're speaking of is when you're taught the gospel, the word of God. And are you retaining it or are you just ignoring it? Now we're going to talk a little bit today about the disciples, how close they were to him, Jesus Christ, and how he taught them the greatest wisdom and knowledge of the word. And yet it went over their heads because the only thing that they really were thinking about is that he was going to be the physical king over Israel and combat the Romans, in which they missed the point completely because that's not why he came. He came for spiritual reasons to bring people unto the kingdom of God. So let's, let's start with Luke 24. Uh, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, Thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Now these two men were messengers. They were the angels of God. Verse 5, And they were afraid, bowed down their faces to the earth. And they said unto them, Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Already there's indication that the main scriptures that they were taught which was going to dictate his death, burial, and resurrection, they had forgot or wasn't listening. Verse 6, He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was in Galilee. And they needed to remember what they heard and what was taught unto them at this point in time, but they didn't. Verse seven, 
saying the Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. The messengers are trying to knock on their heads and say, wake up, remember you were with him as he spoke these words of wisdom. And verse 8, the Bible says, and they remembered his words. Wow, they remembered his words. Now here's the very uh, closeness and irony of this whole picture. And, and, and re they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Who were these? that told of this story. Verse 10, it was Mary Madeline and Jonah and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. It's a funny thing, the women were quick to check things out and, and see what was going on why the men were crammed up, the disciples, they were crammed up, you know, uh, weeping, moaning about the loss of their Savior. Didn't seem to me like they had very much get up. And verse 11, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. And sometimes I got to ask the question, were these disciples acting sexist? because the women were the ones that went there first and brought back the information and they didn't want to believe it. And they, the men, were supposed to be the leaders of all things that uh, happen and be the ones that were informational and, and bring it all back to the others. Here we have the two that the... the uh, Twelve disciples who walk with him, who now doesn't believe. Wow. Pitiful. Very pitiful. Verse 12. And then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher, and stooping down, of course, because he didn't believe. He had to see it for himself. Wasn't going to let no women tell him uh, the, the future before he witnessed it himself. And he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. He was shocked that what they had told him was of truth. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score and furlong. It was several days there that they, uh, they were on a journey. And they talked together of all these things which had happened as they were walking on this journey. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. And here we're going to find out. Again, the title of the message is How to Stand Next to a Blessing and Miss It. They were standing right next to him and didn't even know who he was and that he exists. Verse 16, But their eyes were holding, fixed, in other words, that they should not know him. In other words, their eyes were fixed on the circumstances at hand. They were not even reaching out to see the surroundings around them. Verse 17, and he said unto them, and now this is Jesus speaking to them as he slipped up on them and are walking with them. What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And one of them whose name was Clepas, answering, said unto him, 
Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? So this tells you right away uh, that this Cleopas was more of a gossiper than a believer, just spreading the rhetoric, spreading it abroad, so much that he didn't even know who he was spreading it to. Verse 19, And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been, and he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this today is the third day since these things were done. So again, they were focused on him redeeming Israel physically, destroying the Romans, and being uh, the king of Israel, the deliverer. Now, three years in the Bible, they were more physical-minded rather than spiritual-minded as they walked with him during his ministry. One might want to say they were going along for the ride. They were not retaining the things that were taught to them in their knowledge. Again, the title of the sermon is How to Stand Next to a Blessing and Miss It. Verse 22. Yea, and certain uh, woman or women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And this was their interpretation of the original that actually happened at the sepulcher. Okay? And everything's uh, repeated over. over. Sometimes it does re, uh, lose its translation. Verse 24. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even as the women had said, but him they saw not. And again, this, it, this uh, equates to their unbelief on what the women had first uh, testified to them about. Verse 25, Then said he unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. This is Jesus talking. They have not yet recognized that it was him. Verse 26, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? The question Jesus asked. And he began at, at, on verse 27, at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, finally their arrival, whither, where they went and where we're going. And he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far apart. And he went in to tarry with them. Still don't recognize him. Still don't know who he is, standing next to a blessing and about to miss it. Verse 30, And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, verse 31, and they knew him. And he, Jesus, vanished out of their sight. Let me say something to you today. Blessed is he that believes and has not seen. Anyone can believe something that stands before them. But where is your faith? Is your faith from the beginning right on to the end? Verse 32. And they said it said one to another, Did not our hearts burn with us while he talked with us by the way and while he 
opened to us the scriptures. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. Verse 34, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of the bread. It's funny that some things physically gets our attention and the spiritual things that should already have our attention has nothing. Remember to say your grace. I'm, I'm going to throw this in there. Sometimes that could be what you are remembered by when you're sitting with unbelievers. And here Jesus, when he broke the bread and blessed it, gave thanks and distributed it, then that was an awakening call and what he was remembered for. Verse 36, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. They still lacked the faith to know who they were walking with, talking with, and who just appeared right in their presence. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? And I believe some of them probably wanted, wanted to run because they thought that this couldn't be. Verse 39, Behold my hands and my feet, that it as I myself, this is Jesus talking, handle me, he said, and see me, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet, the marks in them. Verse 41, And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, in other words, they still didn't get the concept of who was standing next to them. They were still in question. And he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? Again, here we go, physicalness. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of any of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And as he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Verse 46, And said unto the, he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoves Christ to suffer. I gotta suffer is what he's saying. And for me to rise from the dead the third day. Basically, what was he saying? This was the plan. I tried to convey it to you but you were a bunch of knuckleheads. Verse 47, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. In other words, Jesus is saying in my name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48, And ye are witnesses of these things. Get it through your head. You're witnesses of these things. It's time for you to take over and preach what you've seen and what has been taught to you, and what you better believe. Verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endowed with the power from on high. So he's going to empower them with the Holy Spirit. He's asking them to tarry. And what, let me tell you something. This is faith right here, that they would go and tarry, and the city of Jerusalem, and wait until they be endowed with the power from on high. Verse 50, And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, 
he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Now I say to all of you, what does it take to get through our thick heads when we read the word, when the Holy Spirit ministers unto us? What part don't we want to understand? Because this is a living reality. And if we don't grasp the concept, how can we teach others that there will be times and moments that we will be standing next to a blessing and miss it because our minds are not in the spiritual mode to be able to sense, be able to detect, to be able to um, take this and minister and be ministered unto. And my final question to you is, are you retaining your knowledge or not? God bless you. Thank you for joining us on the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We encourage you to have a conversation with God on a daily basis. Not many people take the time out of their schedule to do so. This ministry encourages everyone to receive Jesus Christ into their life as Lord and Savior. You may ask, how do I receive him? Just talk to him, confessing to him as being a sinner and how much you need him. Asking Jesus into your heart, which is your mind, and in doing so, we then have a covenant with God that when we repent and ask forgiveness for any of our sins that we all commit regularly, God is justified to forgive us of our sins. Let me say that the most challenging moment we will face in our life is receiving that forgiveness that God provides. You may not feel comfortable the first time around, but practice makes perfect. Knowing that someone loves you deeply as God Almighty, he himself has proven by bringing his only begotten son to take on our sins as the last sacrifice for mankind, to absorb all of the sins of mankind that we all commit and still having the power to forgive us. We love you and look forward to meeting with you and sharing the next message. Worrying how the story ends When I let go and I let God I let God have his way That's when things start happening when I stop looking at back then When I let go and I let God I let God have his way mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to fall asleep There was so much on my mind Searching for that peace but the peace I could not find Oh, but then I, I kneeled down to pray I was praying, help me please Then he said, you don't have to cry Cause I'll supply all your needs
Let go. Oh, let go. Let go. And just let God. Let go. Oh. 